uh, the, the fact that the, our water infrastructure um, has got to a state where we've fallen slightly behind our maintenance, um, I think it's important that we utilize new technology and positioning of infrastructure around hospitals to be able to prioritize when we have uh, shutdowns and load shedding and maintenance issues that those clinics and hospitals can be prioritized when looking at uh, a break in service. Mm. And, and what do you believe needs to change in the infrastructure of our hospitals in order to better deal with water issues when they arise, as is the case now? I think you know, we need to look at the long-term solution rather than the emergency of water tank supply. And National Treasury has released a very good document around the infrastructure delivery management system, which steps uh, puts forward steps in, in implementation of new infrastructure and maintenance of it. And I feel if we could utilize the new technology around uh, artificial intelligence and, and data uh, mining, we could change that toolkit that National Treasury has into a system that would be able to give decision makers quick and, and fast answers to prioritizing um, emergency situations of intervention and and uh, bringing the service back where necessary. If you could give us some practical examples of how AI and data mining, uh, for example, would assist decision makers. So uh, at the moment you live in Johannesburg and you have a water breakage in your SMS or your phone or you go onto Twitter and you report the, the leak. Um, a multitude of SMSs arrive at a data center, and that can then be disseminated and, and collated by the software and by the system to be able to give a response or a decision priority to a decision maker who then sends out a, a, a truck or sends out a maintenance unit to fix the, the leak, but it, in its own intelligence has prioritized the visit. So the bigger the leak or the bigger the impact on a hospital, for instance, or a residential area, it will send the, the right response at that particular time by using the artificial intelligence and, and sifting through the data it's receiving from the community. Mm. That then would assume that those on the receiving end have the capacity and the know-how to be able to deal with the challenges that will be reported uh, by community members. What then if they actually don't have? What if there is overload and a lack of capacity to be able to react to these urgent situations? So, so the data system relies on both the community responding to a leak, but it also has the intelligence and we have it in our systems where um, the reporting on levels of reservoirs and and leakage points can be identified in the infrastructure through meters on the, physically in the infrastructure in the pipe network. Um, so it's not totally reliant on someone phoning in and, and responding with a, a complaint of, of uh, water shortage. So really, um, if, if I hear you correctly, the systems that you are proposing would assist mostly in the maintenance uh, and making sure that one is able to evaluate and see what the leakages are or where the problem points are before they exacerbate. Correct. So you want to future-proof it and prioritize the intervention. Um, and through the digital interaction, you're able to take, uh, you, you give, the, the information has, has one single version of truth that the decision maker can then make a decision on. Um, and it's dynamic and it's quick and it's, it's making the decision away from a human being trying to understand what the 100 SMSs mean or what does the water meter reading mean to him. The system's already giving him a prioritized output. Mm. And what would be the cost in implementing such systems? Look, they, uh, you know, obviously uh, we need to have the infrastructure around the IT software and the, and the, and the systems in place and monitor it. But if you look at the cost of uh, water, uh, leakage and wastage and the cost of um, people in hospital not having water supply um, is not as significant as dealing with those issues. Mm. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Dominic Collett for 
um, this conversation alternate ways of, of making sure that we don't find ourselves in uh, the kind of water scarcity situations in our hospitals in the future, being able to uh, pretty much prevent them uh, from happening and nipping it in the bud when they arise. Thank you very much uh, for your time.